guys it's acrylic painting monday another fabulous monday with another old dg one of our old dead artists old we call them the old old dead guys they uh, artists i don't think we've ever introduced you to before he's sort of new to me and i'm going to tell you why you've never heard of him why? we're going to talk about why you've never heard of this guy oh. even though he's quite talented a french artist a bit back in the mid 1800s does florals and so what is it why didn't you hear about this guy what is it that he did that was sort of unique why do we care and do we like his artwork i liked it and it's going to be fun to paint i'm going to show you how to paint it all right so this is what we call a premiere where john and i have pre-recorded the video we have a a uh, group of very dedicated moderators who are probably, I like <laughs> Karzak predicting the future here, yes, um, uh, moderating the live chat for us. And if John and I are, um, I don't think John and I will be on the live chat for this one because I think we're going to be on an, we're on an airplane heading to Rome. to Rome. So we won't be on, but we wanted to make sure you had a video. You didn't miss a Monday because we had to miss you. Ooh, tear in my eye, tear in my eye. I know, <laughs> I know, John. Sad, sad, sad. So, back down to our table here. So, you, here, here is it. He was a, this guy was a, a French artist and he specialized in flowers. You and might want to give a hint on what his name is. I'm not saying it right because we're <laughs> going to spell it for you. Spell it, John. Oh, we're going to spell it for you. John, you spell it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. His name is Eugene Henry C-A-U-C-H-O-I-S. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but anyway, that was his name. But... <laughs> Why haven't you heard of John Henry, right? Because, I mean, Eugene, there's a song Eugene, about Eugene, Eugene Henry. Henry. Eugene Henry? Yeah, yeah. what? Um, John Henry was the guy with the big ox. With he? the big ox. You heard of him. You yeah. heard of Eugene Henry? There's you no songs being Eugene. read about it. You know why? This is, we're going to tell you a little. This is the mystery we will reveal shortly. In the meantime, we've got a. Oh, a cliffhanger. Uh, we've got a 9 by um, 12. 12 canvas. And you'll notice that unlike our, our Max uh, Max artist, the, the other German artist we've been doing a little bit, uh, who did that, he divided it up and had dark and light and so forth and then switched them. This says he has dark in the corner and lighter here. Then he's got like a. T table right there and so that basically if you, i've just got some burn number on this canvas basically we want something a little darker here um and then so this is going to be the light side that'll be the dark side all right make sense no, so i don't want to trace the flowers on until i get a little bit of the background in it's, 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 it's going to be hard with all these things to get around it so let's let's the first thing we're going to do is do our background Let's talk about colors. So we got to talk about colors. So everybody says, well, I wish you'd just tell us what colors you use. We use the same colors all the time, you guys. Pretty much same colors. If you have one of our color charts, then you know. If you make and a color chart, like so a we've got some burnt umber, um, burnt umber, burnt sienna. We're going to have phthalo blue and turquoise blue. We're going to have uh, Payne's gray. And which is an ultramarine blue and black. We're going to have cad red light, cad yellow light, cad yellow, cadmium orange, yellow oxide, titanium white, buff titanium, zinc white, and magenta. Those are the colors we're going to be using. Could you say the blues again? Ultramarine blue, phthalo blue. Do you know you said turquoise blue? Did I? Uh-huh. Well, I lied. <laughs> I was going to say, did you pull out a new color that I've never bought? Yeah, no, no. We're, we're going to be before. using a, a, a thalo turquoise, which is... A, oh, that's... Okay. That's what they call theirs. Yeah, the whole one calls it. Some people call it thalo blue. And ours is thalo. Just said thalo, that's fine. Oh, anyway, we're going to be... Painting, painting that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's our thoughts. So... What I want to do first is the background, which is going to be pretty much burnt, burnt umbers and burnt siennas, right? And um, let's take our, um, I'm going to just use our less, you know, just kind of our int kind of interesting reference photo like this. So you kind of get an idea where we're going with this. So I want a uh, kind of a nice brush, like, you know, kind of a, you could use a round brush. This is a art shirt, but you probably, 
uh, number eight uh, silver brush. I don't think you can get these anymore. These are sort of collector's items. <laughs> um, but, you know, cast time, it's a fairly stiff brush, but round would be fine. So we're going to start with the burnt umber in a little ultramarine blue and just come on up here like that, make a circle, and very quickly do this background. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue, right there? Everybody's with me on that? Yeah. Think so. I'm just going to do that, okay? Make these little circles come around. We've got videos on, on the, all kinds of videos on how to do this type of background. We're going to come over here toward the middle, do this. Kind of like background that. we use on all our portraits. Which is, which this is pretty standard background for your, um, uh, for your art, you know, for artwork that I'm um, looking for the burnt, burnt sienna now here. Um, for most of your still lifes, it's a pretty standard background. And uh, so I want to uh, go ahead and now take the burnt sienna. And, ooh, what was that? I got into blue by mistake. Oh, let's erase that. Take that off. Now, when you do that, don't try to work it in. If you, I reached down, I wasn't looking, and I grabbed the blue instead of the burnt sienna. They're pretty close together in my Stay Wet palette. Okay. So I'm just going to take a, I'm just going to wipe that off because I don't want that on there. I don't want to have to deal with that color at all. See how blue it is? I don't want that color in the background. So that's one of the things that, you know, kind of pay attention to is, um, uh, you know, which color are you getting? So here we go. So a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of buff titanium. We're going to come up here like that in a little bit. We, do we have any raw umber? I don't think so, but maybe we should put some out. <laughs> little, do we have? I thought I had raw, had raw umber for another painting I was doing today. We do, if we're pre-recording, we do a bunch of these at one time. Yeah, a little raw umber. Um, let's see, we can probably put it right there. And just just a little bit of that, just a dab of that. There you go. Let's just mix these together like that. Remember, it's it's smoke and uh, clouds, that kind of thing. That's the kind of background you're doing. Here's a little Smoking raw umber, like clouds and stuff like that, right? So let's take a little bit of something lighter in here. I want this to be. He he got his a little bit um, dark, in my opinion, and maybe his uh, painting got darker as he went. But um, I want, because the flowers, see, on this side, you've got to be able to see these blue flowers. So you don't want this part of the background too dark. That's why raw umber is a very transparent color. So we want to kind of do that. Let's take a little bit of zinc white and just come down here and lighten something. Still like the buff titanium for that. Okay, like that. There you go. And if I need to lighten it again, I can. But I want to just have that much, and then the all this in here doesn't matter so much. But we've got the uh, the um, burnt sienna, buff titanium, a little bit of orange. I want to come in here like that and say, "Here's the um, the table. It's this way, and uh, just that's why we, you know good burnt sienna background was good for this because." Um, um, see how much lighter I'm making that right like that. There you go. And just a little bit of burnt sienna, raw umber. There you go. Kind of age everything a little bit. Now, if we need more, we can add it. But um, this is pretty much the plan, right? Like that. That's that's my plan. And then I'll take some burnt umber here and make this darker. So there you go. There's, that's the plan, you guys, for the floral. Let's see, up here like that, do I want to add anything? I'm pretty happy with this. So uh, maybe almost happy getting there. Uh, I just know that I want something a little bit lighter up in here, and I didn't quite get it, so there you go. Almost like it's clouds. See, use the side of your brush, barely touch it. Get these soft, fluffy. 
out of focus light areas. There's a little bit of CAD red in here too. You can, you can play with this background a little bit, kind of have fun. Good practice, right, before you start your other stuff. All right, I'm going to dry this, and we're going to trace the um, picture on. And, of course, the traceables will be available at Carlic Painting with GingerCook.com on our website for orange rivers and above, right? Yes and yes? Yes and yes. So um, let's dry this and trace it on. Okay, so here's uh, just our, our reference photo. and we've Whoa, got, that was magic. So How'd you do that? Trace, we have traced it on. And um, you just pretty much got some main pansies. Now, if you're getting confused, just do a Y and a W or something. Y. And B, you, you B know, background. You know, or B for blue, Y for yellow, blue. See, so that kind of helps you know where things go if you're confused after you start drawing all these in. You're going, you know, it reminds me of a poem where this. So, as from childhood, I love this, if I'm going to say it anyway, because this is, I mean, this is part of the big bucks you pay for watching this free show as you get all this entertainment. And this, it goes like this. A centipede was happy, quiet, and tell a frog in fun, said, pray, which leg comes after which? Was set his mind in such a pitch, he lay distracted in a ditch, considering how to run. And you could get the sort of the centipede syndrome in there, trying to decide which flower is white and which is blue. And oh, so make a map, that. right, man? Make a map, friends. So we're going to start map with it which, we're going to do a little um, we're going to do a little map for you. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, some yellow, yellow, and we're going to say that this flower back this is a white one, so this is a yellow one. I got a yellow one here, right? And I'm going to use just yellow oxide in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and using just a little um, bright brush here, I'm going to go ahead and paint this flower shape in. Okay, a little bit of yellow oxide, cat yellow medium. I'm going to go ahead and paint this in. Okay, doesn't look like much because even this back in the back here was still kind of a yellow color, but that's that's what this one is. And then this one back up here is also yellow. So it's like a hunt, you know. What else is yellow? So I've got the yellow oxide here. Come down like this. And uh, what about the rule that yellow only w over white? Well, I was going to ask that question. They, I know they, they're going in the chat with that. So there are people that are going to ask that. I'll put a little bit of CAD red with this, too. Um, the, the thing is, is that we're not trying to do bright yellow. And where we are, we can introduce white again. We know we've got a little yellow one right here. So when you want the brightest of yellows, you do it. Yeah, if you want the brightest thing you've got, then you do that. But the white flowers are the stars in this one, not the yellow ones. I mean, there's some yellow here. and We'll definitely have some yellow highlights, but the white flowers are definitely our stars in this in this little enterprise. So, so those we've got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, four, five. yeah, five, five flowers. Okay, and then there's a little yellow thing coming out here on the edge here. There's a little yellow thing growing out here like that. We'll put him, we could put him too, we could, but he would be uh, yellow oxide. There's our little yellow thing here. There you go. So if you do a little bit, few little things like this, it kind of helps, I think, because it gives you the, um, it makes a, a little maps never hurt. Yeah. So, so I'm going to rinse the brush and then we're going to go take some titanium white and we're going to say the top, this flower here is very white here. This is the highlight of this flower right here. This is the whitest part. And, um, right there. And then I'm going to use the buff titanium for the rest of it. Not quite as white, but this is going to be sort of a white flower with blue um, shadows. So here's the back side of that flower. Okay, and of course this is just the first coat. Yeah. So 
All right, let's just take some white now on this one here. I'm just going to go ahead and paint, paint some, just paint it white. I'm not going to worry about where the highlights are, but that one was kind of important, so we're doing that. Here's the white petal here like that. Now let's take a little bit of this and we'll ultramarine blue and white, just hardly any. And let's just come up here like that and see here's the, this is the other flower. Remember, we're just roughing these in, right? This is map number two, you guys. So we're just roughing these in. It's got a good, when you have two white flowers next to each other, something has to be a little different, yes? And so then we've got, here's a white flower out here too. Comes around, but it doesn't, the center kind of separates it. So in shadow in that part. So, all right, good, yes, good, good. Uh, got a little bit of a white petal down here like that. Uh, let's come on over here next to this yellow one. There's something right here. It's sort of hiding back under here. And then this one is our bigger one. So we're talking about this guy because I'm, I was looking at him and he did so many florals. I thought most of them were a little too busy myself, but uh, that's not why he wasn't, wasn't famous. The reason he wasn't famous was he had this screwy idea. He didn't sign his paintings with his name. And, um, and so, you know, when people buy a Van Gogh, they, a Van Gogh painting or a, a Matisse or whatever, Picasso, they don't say, I have a, a lily pond or I have a, some sunflowers. They say, I own a Van Gogh or a Monet or a, they true. say the artist first. And this is the key for you. It's not your art. Sell the artist, not the art. Because apparently a lot of people can paint pansies, and his paintings are worth absolutely nothing compared to his other contemporaries. And because he signed his name with the months of the year. If he painted in October, it was it was October painted it. <laughs> and if in November, November painted it. And that's just nuts. And, and, and obviously, you see, it didn't work out. So and he was very very good at florals. Yeah, he was. He was as good as the Max other guy. You come across one of his landscapes and no. Yeah, that wasn't his favorite thing. No. You know, he wasn't the best there, but nonetheless, the landscape. I mean, the florals are there. There's literally hundreds of them to do. It's okay. like Lancier. He's another one of our guys. He, he can do dog. He can do animals, but he did people and boy. All right, so this one he was is not man's best friend for that one. This is ultramarine blue. Here's a this one's going to be blue and purple. Using a little bit of the out, light, white outline on it. See that? For the um, there's that pansy. And then I got a little bit of this one's going to be purple. Let's just do a little bit of white on this first. Yeah, see, it's kind of a light purple here. Uh, See, we're just going to put these in like that. And uh, back to our blue one, a little bit of white. There's a blue one back here. A little bit of ultramarine blue. And this has got to, your background's got to be light enough for this to show up, for this one to show up. And then there's a, a blue one right here, kind of a blue purple color. That's kind of tucked in here, just some indication it's tucked in there. And there's something kind of purple back up in here. And um, something a little purplier right up on this one. Okay. There's a little blue purple something in here. It just sort of indicates some color here. And uh, uh, there's some blue purple kind of color underneath all these flowers up in here. Let's just do a little bit of Payne's gray with that. Um, right under this flower in here, a little bit of burnt umber. 
There you go. Come here, you. Oh, burnt, maybe burnt over an ultramarine blue would be a good color with a tiny bit of magenta in it. There we go. Kind of a purpley color. Okay, that magenta look purple. Yeah, because I've added blue to it. Oh, that was right. That was like a purple. Sorry. Yeah, you added purple, not magenta. You're right. Thanks. Good, good catch, you. I just want something dark over here. See, <laughs> see this, 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 this all comes out. Along, kind of, we're just, yeah. Well, no. If you catch that, that's good. You know, someone else will catch it. And I won't be there to explain it. So good thing you're <laughs> catching it. Okay. And it kind of stops. Doesn't really go back any further than this. That's our dark shadow, and then we've got the dark shadow underneath here. Um, in this corner here, a little bit of red in it. A little bit of, there we go. Just <clears throat> don't want to get too carried away, but there's that. Okay. So as, as see, we're kind of laying this in. Um, Rough blockage. Yeah. That's, well, at least getting your color down so you know where things go. Well, yeah, but you, you, you've got to have your color map and you've got to get that fairly, fairly, you've got to substantiate that fairly soon. And I want to take, before I get too much further, I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna and orange, cadmium orange, which I just love that color. <laughs> and I'm going to come along here like this and do my, um, I'll take a little bit of raw, uh, this is tight, um, um, what is that? That's unbleached titanium as we move along. And then here's a little bit of the raw umber. We're going to keep moving colors along as we keep coming this way. And then I want some unbleached titanium again, a little bit of burnt sienna. And as we're going to come into here like this, that's the, um, that's the next layer of this background. And you see how you can... You kind of want to get this in before you get the the rest of it because um, you know, for instance, you want a little bit darker, darker under this flower here. You want under this yellow flower in this area here. That's going to be a little darker. So anytime you can kind of kind of lay stuff out a little bit, so it's a little bit. Here, just come down here with this um, edge on the top of our. I don't know what this is. Um, it's an interesting table, and it's got an interesting ledge to it, doesn't it? So we're going to say that's lighter. Yeah, it's a rough. I like it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying it's different. <laughs> so it'd be so, nasty, the poor guy. No, not me. It just just kind of goes back up into here like that, and um, gets darker down into here. There you go. So there's the, we kind of put the, you know, we kind of wanted to put the table in. Um, it's a little bit of purple here. That's a, like, there's a white flower. There's another little purple flower right here. We'll just put that in too, as long as we're just putting in flowers, yeah? So this is a good time to, 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 to take a break and just dry this. And um, before I do, I want to make sure I have that light edge along here. There you go. All right, so we're going to dry that, and then we'll come back and finish it. Well, I'm going to finish, finish it, it that quickly. Well, no, really? but we'll, we'll we'll give it a stab, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make sure I have a clean brush, and I like that little one I was using. And we'll start with the yellow flowers. Where's my picture? Yes and yes. I don't want water on this. Tell you what, you put your brush in water and it drips everywhere. Did you All wring right. it out? Yeah, it did, okay. but you know, just on the way to wringing it out kind of thing. Okay. All right, so here's the, um, here's this pansy yellow. here like this. So we're going to come up here like that and uh, uh, get the second coat of color on here. Take a little bit of the cadmium orange and put it in here like that. Okay. And uh, do I need any of this cadmium orange anywhere else? Well, maybe, but I'm not going to worry about it now. So we're going to be back to this sort of beige yellow color. 
It's kind of a flat beige yellow color. So both titanium and that yellow oxide probably closest to anything I'm doing right now. Almost got a green tint to it. We're going to say that there's our There's our uh, pansy coming this way, like that. And then just a little tiny bit. Sometimes I just put the color in anyway, kind of sneak it in here. Just sneak it in. And then in the center, this is cad yellow light and orange. Um, center, what we'll do there, right there. And then when we go to put the purple, we'll come back on that one, all right? So moving right along, this one down here is uh, just burnt sienna and orange. Um, the orange color, maybe a little yellow. But uh, that's this one up here like that. And just have a few little colors on the brush and just, just suggest that and we'll put that there. Now let's go back and move on and let's do this one. Just kind of roll my brush and say there's a little bit of yellow under this purple. And for, but, the, but for the most part, it's a little bit, it's almost a rust color here. But there's this flower here, and we'll put a center later. So I think a lot of times you, you overthink this, and where else can I put this color? Some of this color is down in here for sure. Um, it's the sort of pansy colors in the... Um, it's in your foreground too and you know remember because acrylic's dry darker you may have thought you got the foreground pretty good and then you didn't so now we've got a little bit of cad yellow light and we know we want something a little brighter up here like that and that's a little too I want a little bit more of the uh, yellow um, don't want that quite that bright. Here we go. So we said there's another little pansy here. And then this is a more in shadow here. In fact, I like that. Okay, so we didn't have to say too much about that, right? So we got that one. See how we're whipping through these pansies like crazy, aren't we? Then we're going to say that here's a little bit of this orange color. We're going to say that there's this uh, pansy right here. That's the shape of it. And it's got a little bit, this back, back um, petal is um, kind of behind that. And then there's a little bit of this burnt sienna color right there. Too much, so we'll just wipe off the brush and kind of melt that in, right? Now, at some point I could dry all this, but I'm just going to, I'm just kind of layering colors. Um, and notice the brush direction. And uh, let's see, a little bit of white. I've got something a little bit lighter right here, okay, and there. And just see where your lights are and your darks are. Where can I put a little light? Okay, where can I put a little light? What's what's lighter? What's darker? And we won't put the center in. And then we've got down here, we've got a little, ah, as we're here, we've got a little yellow flower, which we can now put in because we have our ground in. There you go, a little bit yellow flower there. And there was one. Here, okay. Gosh, Coming we're making together. progress, right? So, I mean, it's kind of a thought. It's just it's a, it's kind of methodical, really, is what we're doing. So the next one we'll do is uh, let's do the the blue flowers. So we're going to do those again. So we want um, um, some purple and ultramarine blue, and say that this flower right here is a little darker then we uh, originally had it painted, this side right here, and kind of next to this too, next to this yellow one. And the only, maybe up here too, like that. And then the only thing that's light on that is a little zinc white and ultramarine blue. See, that's gone brown on me, so let's try that again. Ultramarine blue and zinc white, mix that up there little magenta in it, or a little purple in it, rather. There you go, see? Just the tip of that one. Layered that in there. Yes and yes, flower done. Moving on, we got a little purple flower down here at the bottom. 
like so. Okay, I saw it with a little bit of white on the top, like that. Let's try white, that was zinc. There we go, right there, done. Uh, next flower, oh yeah, we got a, like a little bit of purple. And that's that um, mauve color that you can make. Magenta and ultramarine blue makes a very nice purple. You don't have that. And um, there you go, there's a little purple flower there. So moving on up here, let's see, I've got a purple flower up here with something pretty dark. Ooh, too much paint, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna just throw that one in there. Now, next, next color, kind of a blue here. Okay, there's that flower. And flower here. Something darker right in here, something a little bit darker in here. And now we're moving, all, just spinning around, aren't you? You're going, wow, she's going so fast, but look how fast you can paint these in once you decide what the colors are. Pick a, you know, pick a color, make it, get a decision. And um, something's either lighter and darker than something else. That's, that's all there is to it. Where are the light edges, where are the dark edges. There's a little bit of a light tweak in there, like that. Okay, we don't know. With that flowers just hidden in there, just uh, kind of doing this, like that. We don't even have to talk about it. That pe people are just always surprised, but John, that's just how fast you can do this. People understand how you can paint so fast. You just have to know. It's like typing. You have to know where the keys are on the keyboard. And then, then you're in good shape. Now we're going to take a little bit of that magenta purple here like this and put it right here like that in the center of this pansy, right like that, as long as we're in those colors, yeah? And how about here? Let's go up here like that and like this. Okay, and so there's a pansy. Okay, so let's see, do we have any purple in this one? Yeah, just suggesting it. Same thing here. Not nothing too detailed. There's there you go. So sometimes you're just sitting there going. I, let me tell you what I had. If I had a friend that was an artist, Norman used to work for me when I cinnamon was a kid and we living in California. And um, Norman literally would pray over every brushstroke. Took him forever to paint anything. He did these giant, big sort of abstracts. And um, he'd pray over every brushstroke because he just wasn't sure where they would go. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do that or should. I'm just saying that you could go a little faster than that. You know, if you sort of have a hint about where it would go, particularly when you're doing something like this, where they've already told you where, to, where it goes, where all the colors go. Okay, there's a color right you there. You got your right? road map. Yeah, you got a road map. So, you know, come on, you guys. <laughs> you could do it. It's all right. But I'm not, not knocking it. I'm just saying that there's other options. How's that? Sounds like I'm knocking Norman. I wouldn't knock Norman. He was a very sweet man. Um, all right, so now we're done. Let's do the blue flowers, the white flowers now. You ready for that? So we're talking about white and light blue. That's why I want the phthalo blue. White and light blue, and I barely want to see this color, just really light here, okay? So here's my, this is really, that's the color. It's sort of this baby boy blue room, you know, it's the color you paint, the room of a, of a baby boy. Did you say that's the color? That's the color it looks like to me. I'm going to, I'm going to put a little bit of orange in it. To tone it down just a bit, gray it a bit, just a tiny bit of orange. And that will gray it a bit and a little more white. And I'm going to come down here and do the same thing with this one. Here's the shadow. This is our your, your baby blue shadow color. Going, oh, cool, right? So we want sort of a combination of that, and we want most of this. Is, this is really white here, right? We're going to come down here like that. Say so there's our baby blue color in here. 
And we're going to just take a little white and say, here's our pansy coming out this way. We'll have to go back with white on this, which, we, which I know we need to do. We'll come back with white, but this is the uh, map, okay? Yes? Next flower. Got to have a little white to bring it up. This, um, starting with the titanium. Let's just lighten this up again. So that's your second coat, right? Now we'll take a little bit of that shadow color, which we just made, put that in there, kind of that purpley shadow blue color. It's not as the, uh, there's a little bit of that shadow back here, too. Is that one back there a little bit of white and blue? Or this the, one, see? Oh, yeah. he's in the shade. Yeah. Oh. He's in the shade, so we're gotcha. just... Gotcha. He's in the shade, so just... Okay. This one, like the same thing here. These guys are kind of in the shade. There's another petal down there, too. Apparently he has the same thing. I suggest what happens to flowers that end up on the table. Okay, so then we've got this color right down here, too, like that. There you go. A little bit. There's another one sneaking down here, and nobody's talking about that one. And there's a little bit of this light blue right here on this flower, right there on his edge. Okay. Anywhere else we need to put it? Uh, pretty good. The lightest one is right here. All right, so let me dry this. And why I'm drying it, I want to show you a floral that we've got in our academy that's going to blow your mind. It's our new release this week. Wait till you see it. Whoa, that's a big preening. I know. This is 16 by 20, and this is the lilacs in the window, originally by Mary Cassette, who was an Impressionist artist, mostly did women and children. Did a couple still lives. We have another one on the, on the website that's... Um, uh, of two ladies by a river that we redid recently and it made it nice and large. And I, I, we, had, I, gosh, like seven years ago, I did a little tiny one of this and I felt it was time to redo it the, the proper size. And so this is the lilacs in the window. I think are, if you like florals, Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, and you can just buy this singly as a downloadable lesson if you just want to own this and how to do it, or be part of our academy, take advantage of personal art coaching, and um, know that uh, every month we're releasing fabulous new pictures. And people say, well, I don't want to be overwhelmed. I've got too much stuff, and I'm going, look, we figure in a month's time there may be something out of four or five paintings I release. There may be just one or two that you want to do, and that's fine. You have a wish list you can bookmark. So don't rush through these. These are just, if you're into florals, we try to give you that. If you're into old cars, we try to give you that. If you're into still lifes, we try to give you that. And and teach you step-by-step uh, step how to do it. I think that um, this is probably one of my new favorite florals, simply because <laughs> I, I always have favorites. But this is one because I had been wanting to redo this for the longest time, and I think we did. I think you'll love it. All right, so meanwhile, back at the pansies. Um, well, back at the ranch. Well, we're back at the ranch and pansies. Back ranch, at the ranch right? that has pansies. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of white here, add a little bit. Of, there's my, this one I want a little bit brighter. White's one of those colors that sometimes you have to do a couple times because... Um, it's not 100% opaque. Well, it's not only that, but your brush is dirty, and so it's contaminating it. It's... Um, This one is, this little um, petal is folded over like that in front of here, and then like this, and like that, and like that. So there's like four little white streaks of stuff. And uh, this one down here, of course, obviously needs a lot more coats than we gave it. Um, don't lose the shape on these. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. It's a little bit brighter. And uh, 
don't want you again don't want you to lose the shape of the flowers um, here you go another one where it's a little bit brighter here then we're going to come in here with a little bit of yellow and cad red and just do a little bit of a center well this is cadmium orange rather than cad red sorry what I'm painting is a wonder I can talk at all because I get so focused in on what I'm painting that uh, it's just a little light yellow here and this one Oh, anything over here, maybe a little bit lighter. Let's go around and I'll put a little cad red in there, a little cadmium orange. These are just dots of color. So don't be misled. All right, so that's that's what I've got so far. That's how you do it. So I'm going to dry this real quick, and this will be real quick, John. It's a fast dry. So I want to take a little of this up here, like this, and this, and this one. Just pull it and lift up. It just there's the center of that one, and here's the. It's that cad yellow light. This is where you want just a little bit brighter somewhere. Uh, I want something a little brighter on this one right here. Right there. Never acrylics dry darker, so. Um, particularly yellows. Never hurts to pop the yellows up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to just, um, the tiny brush is good too for this kind of thing. Let me get a little tiny brush, a little detail, zero, you know, one of the little rounds, zero brushes. What do I got? Something small, something like that, right? So I want to come up here with the purple and the blue and, uh, just come out like this with the um, with these little fan things like come out like this thin little lines this one comes out just on this side it does this You want to dry this before you do it because um, let me just turn this sideways so I can. This probably isn't even the best brush for this. I've got better brushes that do this. Okay. Okay. Oh, I want that to be more of a gray color. There you go. So you know we can color that back in there. All right. So back to the purple. I'm going to just, that one isn't giving me a fine enough line. So why do I keep using it? Let's find a different brush. Push and lift up. Push and lift up. You have to put a tiny bit of water on the brush. Kind of make sure you then reshape it. Kind of pinch it and reshape it. And it should be fine. This is kind of shaping up here. It kind of curves around like this in the crack. 
Let's just come up here and do another one of these on this one. Make that a little bit darker. Since we were just going to fix it anyway. You want these little wispy things. You could do a you could do a fine point Posca pen if you had one that was purple. You're having trouble with this. There's like four of them. But it's like the brush looks like it's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, it's all right. And this was some sort of yellow thing back up in here. We kind of forgot this one, or whatever it is on this. We'll just do that. Then we take some bright yellow here and brighten up this flower. Right like that, right like that. Because acrylics dry darker. See, so we got the pansies. And so anyway, so there was this art, there was this gal, I uh, probably told the story before, but you may not have heard it. There was this lady that um, uh, her, her, her friend was really depressed. And so she thought it would be a nice thing to do to um, um, to buy her a gift. And, and don't we do that for our friends? Buy a little gift, right? So the bright new day. Something to brighten her day. I'm going to put a little green here like that. Okay. Something to brighten her day. So this is white and turquoise and a little yellow. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to put some of that color right here like that. Okay. A little bit of that color right there. A little bit of a leaf right there. A little bit of a stem right there. A little bit of a stem. A little bit of leaf. There you go, see? Just turquoise yellow and um, uh, Anyway, so she's up in Alaska, this is some years ago. And uh, they did a documentary on this on, on 60 Minutes, that's how I saw about it. And um, what what happened was is that she um, uh, bought this large paint giant, like forty eight by sixty, maybe even bigger painting. This abstract thought it was so pretty. She bought it. Just it was she liked the colors, and so she gave it to her. Her friend lived in this mobile home park, and she brought it over to the gal's trailer and. Um, I uh, just discovered, much to her chagrin, that um, the um, it wouldn't fit. She couldn't get it in the door. Her friend liked mm -hmm. it, thought, appreciated it, just couldn't get it in the door. There, some new refrigerators are a little bit like that. You know, I mean, people uh, people don't realize that there's, you know, you've, these older houses, you just can't get just any old okay. thing in, and it won't fit anyway because it wasn't designed for that, and the space is too small. Am I rattling on about stuff that... I feel it's important to know, right? So um, anyway, um, so she decided to have a garage sale, and she was just going to sell it. So this this PE teacher, or somebody from the high school, was an art teacher from the high school. He happened to be driving by her place, and um, um, so she um, she had this painting for sale, and. Um, not that other people wouldn't have the same problem trying to get it in the front door, I'm sure. So, uh, anyhow, um, um, see how I'm filling all of this in with a little bit of blue? Do you see that? Different colors of light and dark blue green. So it's either darker or lighter than something else, right? So thus we're filling in, we're doing this blue-green color off here. This is sort of soft. It kind of covers up this um, this pansy here, and it gets covered up here. And uh, there's something going on out here, there, and then here. A little bit of something right there. Anyway, so cut back to the story. So the teacher says, you know what? He said, there was no signature on the painting. There was no signature on the painting. He says, I think that that is a Jackson Pollock. And she says, who? 
and she says, and Jackson Pollock. And, she, and, and, and he, he, so he says, who's, she says, who's that? And he says, well, he says, he says, I'll tell you what, he's a very famous abstract painter. And if that is, in fact, a Jackson Pollock, um, that's worth millions of dollars. Or a lot of money, thousands, millions of dollars is worth a lot of money. Well, how can I find out? So then, thus became the, the adventure of her trying to find out if she owned a Jackson Pollock. Now, here's the trick, dear friends, and here's why we're talking about this. is because she didn't, he didn't sign it. The painting was not signed. So, therefore, nobody could prove, a, you know, if it was his. Now, it turned out that if it was turned out to be his, um, it was worth millions, maybe $50 million, not just a little bit, but just like, Buku bucks. This is what I call buku bucks. Isn't that what you call buku bucks? John? Yeah, it is buku bucks. Right? Buku bucks, right? And the problem is, and the, so they went to, to this um, um, th this guy that knew all about Jackson Pollock's in New York, this head of the art museum or something there in New York. And he said, nope, it's not it. I, I know everything about him, and that's not it. And she, she was feeling a little deflated. But on the other hand, she hadn't given up yet. And so there's this, there's this, it's, um, if you want to know the whole story about this painting, I won't keep, you know, about the story, you want to know the whole story about this, I'm going to suggest you watch the, um, the movie about it called, uh, Who in the Blank is, or Bleep is Jackson Pollock? And uh, watch that and see if you're not um, uh, blown away by the story, because it is, um, absolutely um, a stunner, okay? Absolutely a stunning story, and um, and a shocker, a, a, a shocker to boot, because um, once once the, the guy in New York um, decided that it wasn't, then there was nothing, his reputation was on the line, so if he suddenly said, oh, well, I screwed up, it really isn't your painting, uh, it really is a Jackson Pollock, unsigned, right? Um, uh, you know, we're going from, you know, we're going from a ten dollar painting to fifty million in about ten seconds. If he would have said it, that's what it was, but he wouldn't say it. Then he never wanted to admit he was wrong. All right. So, um, uh, the journey. This so so. CBS or one of them made this um, documentary about it, and you can watch it. It, it took over ten years to make, and um, about what what happened to this. At one point, that uh, even though that she was still was trying to prove it, it was his painting. Um, some guy offered her like three million dollars for it, just the way it was, and um, she wouldn't take it because it wasn't it. It got it wasn't even about the money anymore, and everybody gets that right. It's about the principle of the thing. I can I know darn well that's what this is, and I don't appreciate people just sort of lying to me about it. That's how she was seeing it, like that. And oh, here's a little red flower here that we don't know why we have a red flower here, but right in here we've got a little bit of a red it's flower. Probably color surprise. Yeah, you think that's what that was? A little red flower here, here like that. Okay. <laughs> Can you kind of see where we're at? Kind of, kind of, kind of surprising, isn't it? How fast something like this can come together. Um, come on, they get a little G ginger. That's kind of neat, right? Did I get one of those from you, John. G ginger. That's kind of neat. But I think it really is neat. So the, the moral of the story is sign your artwork. Sign your artwork and don't sign it Tuesday because you painted it on a Tuesday and then Wednesday and Thursday. And um, I made the mistake one time of, um, well, we'll tell that. That's for another That's for another story. Oh, no. Yeah, There's a cliffhanger for, for you. Yeah, next week we'll talk about that or sometime. Well, no, you can't say next week. We don't know We've when. already recorded next week's show. I don't know where. Yeah, we haven't recorded it. We don't know. Well, we've already recorded it. But someday, remind me and I'll tell you the story about multiple signatures and uh, my art agent. Oh, I love that story. Okay. Another tip. But, yeah, the one everybody from her planet was named Aka something. <laughs> <laughs> and she she explained to me she was a walk-in in the body and from um, uh, 
Somebody. I love it. Of course you do. You know, just... Yeah, well, I wanted this one. I'm going to dry it, show you one more thing, and then we'll finish it off. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so this is a painting that's in our academy that got released last week. And I love the colors in it. If you like the colors, do you see the similar palette? Mm, yes and yes to this. Um, this oh, what's fabulous about this tutorial is we take very plain, not quite black and white uh, very monochromatic. photograph, monochromatic photograph, and splash on the artist color. You've got to learn how to be an artist. You've got to learn how to do the colors. You know, and start off with the color, quintessential color mixing journal. You got to know how to make them. Yeah, you got to know how to mix your colors. So if you haven't been doing this, we recommend that. That's on our website. You can you make your own color mixing journal. It's really pretty fabulous. And if you haven't given yourself that for the holidays, that would be a great gift. So I just think that when you when you're thinking about expanding your artwork, really wanting to paint exciting things. I love the racehorses and uh, and uh, give us a look at acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com see if there isn't a tutorial for you. All right, so we, we're just going to finish up this bottom part right here. I just wanted to make sure that I had the, um, the, uh, the, the I want to come up here a little bit with the the background, let's put a little bit of brown in that. Um, just don't know if I had it, had enough there on the background, because remember your frame's gonna hit it there. And then this was pretty dark back in here. Let me just get a rag, I keep dropping them. This was kind of like a purpley color back in here. This is pretty dark back in here, in this area. And we're just kind of not talking about it so much, right? So that's that's kind of how he ended his back in here, and maybe a little shadow back here, something, and um, something a little darker up into here, and uh, we needed something a little darker up into here too, and then a little bit of just something up in this area. We kind of fill that in, maybe something a little darker. All right, so just do something like that, because I like that. And um, now we want to do this uh, blue-green stems, and they're coming out of here like this. Use your angle brush. I want some green. So it's a darker green here. And then I had a kind of a purple flower that's in front of those. Hang on a second, let's just darken that up. I like that. There was something dark in here. And then what's interesting, see, to make those flowers kind of interesting, there's some like these purple shadows that are here like this. There's like a little shadow there and then this. See, so that makes them kind of stand out a little more. And then there was a little tiny bit, I'm looking here, he's got a little tiny bit of something like that coming on like this. And he didn't introduce a lot of this green, but I want a little bit more bright green than we've got here. So I'm going to just introduce a little of that color, even though he didn't. My artist's tweak says it needs that, just something a little bit more like that, a little bit more like that, and a little bit more of the white and blue-green color, too, say like this. Um, ooh, I'm out of white paint. But maybe I, I have enough. out of white paint. I am. I have, probably have enough of that um, buff titanium to do something lighter. Here you go. 
So there is a just there's there's a combination of light and dark on these um, some of these leaves here. Um, where you kind of got to just um, this. I'm just kind of playing with the colors, but. Um, uh, sometimes you need something, you know, just a little bit darker. Um, this is a pretty, this was a good example of something that went a little darker. A little darker blue on that flower. And maybe something lighter right here, up here. Like this. So again, if you're just going to do a couple of colors, you know, to try to get, try to come back with a few just um, then there were some sort of other flowers going this way that we weren't talking about. Then something came across this flower here, like there you go, that came across those. And um, so I'm just looking for where the highlights are going here, you guys. If you're wondering what I'm doing. I want to see where the where I can throw a highlight in somewhere. But again, I'm going to have to just stop and get some more titanium because we just used it all up. And that's the, where you turn on the light. What we're doing is we're turning on and off the lights. And so if you don't have any light paint, it's pretty hard to do that, wouldn't you say? Very hard. So you want to make sure you're, and you're almost better off using a brand clean brush that hasn't seen any paint on it when you're trying trying to, to you know tweak the whites on this, right? Like that. I'm gonna come in here with some titanium white and um, because his light and dark contrast was everything on this picture. And again, look at that with the. Uh, there was just a couple of places that there was some real white uh, petals. And you want to make sure that you have that. Okay. Because I, there you go. And... Uh, Just looking to see where anywhere else I need to do a little bit of light. Okay. So th it's, there's there's light and there's light. Okay. So the center of, the center of interest is these flowers in here, and they're the brightest. So we're going to take the yellow and brighten that up here. Like that, another little thing of yellow right there, like that. Cat yellow light. Just want to be able to do that. Um, make sure we have our yellows in our centers that we want. So anywhere else we want to put that a little bit of brighter yellow there. I'm just you just go around and say, well, is there? Do I need to tweak it anywhere? Okay. And yeah, you know, you could, you know, we could spend another twenty minutes. I welcome you to come, you know, uh, play with the. Um, um, the, the actual reference photo. See if you 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 may see something in here that I certainly don't see, and that's okay. We we, we don't mind. I mean, there was something going back off of this way that he got. He I always thought he got his stuff a little busy when I was looking at. That was my one critique with him, which was I thought a fairly legitimate uh, comment on his was that he got a little bit bigger. He got just a little bit too. Um, He got a little bit busy, which I didn't think there was any reason to do. Um, there's another coat of red on the these two flowers right there because they're a little brighter. And uh, here's a little bit of a
And okay, we, maybe we can spend another twenty minutes on it. I don't know that it would make that big a difference. Um, he's got some orange in here, like a few little pieces going across, like that. Not quite that big. So, how do you? If you get something that wide, how do you get it skinnier? Uh, just come up here and erase it. It would be. It's better if it's dry when you try to do that. You know, the underneath is dry. So we just will have to put our green back. You can erase it. There was a couple little lines that went across here like that that he did. And I'm not going to take the time to dry it. I'm just going to do this sort of Russian roulette gambling thing here. Leave it like that. And... Uh, Then he had something very light right there. Ooh, do do do. All right. So that all that being said, I say I say that we, you know, in less than an hour, we're able to. Well, an hour and seven minutes. Yeah. Well, in counting drying time and stuff, right? Uh. There. Okay. All right. Let's let's um let's show you what this this guy looks like framed. Frame him up. Whoa. Now there's a museum piece, huh? Look at that. We've got a lot of different pansy tutorials on YouTube. For some reason, YouTube seems to be our pansy home. <laughs> uh, we it's don't know why, place. but there's a lot of different ways to paint pansies. I was fun to bring you a different artist. So what did we learn from this? Signing your name Monday or February or something is a really bad idea because, again, <laughs> nobody's ever heard of February or March or April. If you want to be remembered, people remember the name of the artist. Think about how you sign your name. I've got a, a YouTube video on how to sign your name. Think about all those things um, because it makes a difference. And I we'll changed hope my you, name to Rumpelstiltskin. Yeah, and, and by the way, I'm going to just sign this as we're chatting. This is one I think a gold pen would be good at, don't you, John? Oh, I do. Absolutely. I think I, think I want a gold pen right there. And here's the thing. Um, I, don't, I, I want you to have a wonderful painting journey and just have it the best time ever with your artwork. I wish that I should have shaken that up a little more. When you have a Posca pen, you've got to shake them up a lot. Tip number two, back with your art journey. I think I almost have to sign that again. Yeah. Okay. And uh, ooh, that's so pretty. Could we put some of that in oh, there somewhere? Oh, geez, OP. I just you give a Posca pen to the lady. <laughs> give and, it to the queen. She does nuts. Thing. Why on earth wouldn't this be the first channel you come to when you think about acrylic painting? I th hope it is. I hope you're watching us every Monday. hope you're subscribed to our YouTube cassette. So that means you're going to acrylic painting with Ginger Cook. Um, website, just scroll all the way down to the bottom. And sign up for the newsletter because every Monday we, t we give you the news, the related videos, the what's new in the academy, what's new on YouTube, what John and I are doing. There's all kinds of, we're taking you on our trip this time. Uh, so there'll be some photos on the Gazette about that. May even do more than one Gazette. You might just. Well, we might hopefully get the gab back up and running. So we just don't know. But anyway, you want to subscribe, make sure we're. Um, you, we're part of your art plan. And, Ooh, um, art plan. Yeah, make sure we're part of it, and please subscribe to the channel. Share this video with others. Thanks, our mods, for joining us. Sorry, we couldn't be here today, but we're with you in spirit when you watch this. And your comments are so appreciated and read, and I love to hear how you like this video and how this is helping you on your art journey. But tell me what you learned. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you. Uh, we won't see you, but you'll see us next week. Down the road. Down the road again. Bye. Bye.
Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.